We've talked about the agreement. Now, it's not just the agreement. There is what's called an operations manual. And the operations manual deals with everything, as its name suggests, which relates to the operation of your franchise. It contains all of the franchisor's know-how. Everything he knows that he's going to let you use in order to have a successful business will be in that manual. So it's really, really important to know that that manual contains all of the stuff that you are expecting. Now, in the old days, franchisors said, hey, look, this, is, this contains my know-how. And so I'm certainly not going to let you have the, uh, the manual before you sign the franchise agreement. Things have changed, and I think it's a very good things, thing that things have changed. Increasingly, franchisors are saying to prospective franchisees, well, I'm not going to allow you to take the manual away before you've signed the agreement, but you can come to our office and look at the manual to make sure it contains all of the information that you are expecting. And you can tell an awful lot about the franchise by looking at the manual. You know, is it a really detailed, well-presented, well-documented, thought-through manual? Uh, if it isn't, you need to think long and hard about that franchise. Now, the manual is, is a living document. It will be or should be updated by the franchise or throughout the period of the franchise. And that's a good thing because businesses change, the marketplace change. Um, and we're going to give you a very, very quick run through about the sort of things that you can expect to see in a manual. Right. First thing to say about manuals is that no two manuals are the same, OK? So uh, I'm just giving you an indication of the sort of thing you might expect to see. Um, first of all, a simple business description of the system, what the business involves, and so on. You'd also expect a directory, all members of the head office, uh, your BDM, business development manager, person who's going to be helping you on a, on a regular basis, and, and, and details of all of the other franchisees, details of suppliers, and all of those sort of people should be set out so that you have very easy access to people you may need to speak to. The manual will set out your operating obligations and will set out the franchisor's operating obligations. If equipment is important, it will set out where you buy equipment, how you service equipment, how it's cleaned, what happens if it, if it goes wrong. Stock and purchasing. It will, or should, set out how stock is to be purchased, how you work out what stock to purchase and when, enabling you to analyse uh, purchasing uh, requirements uh, of your business to make sure you don't have too much stock. IT is getting more and more important um, because uh, software is becoming more important. Increasingly, franchisors are developing their own software, as we've already said, uh, and they want it to operate on hardware that actually works as far as the software is concerned. Very often also, franchisors want to have uh, electronic access to all of the data in your IT. So the franchisor will often specify what IT you should have. If it's a vehicle-based franchise, the, the, the manual will set out how, uh, how old it is, how often it's to be clean, how service, signage on it, and so on. Likewise for premises. Um, the manual will contain all the forms that you need for your franchise. Uh, there will be substantial record keeping and reporting to the franchisor about how your business is doing. And the manual will contain the sort of forms that you're required to complete. It will tell you how to invoice and set out the invoicing forms, your customers, how regularly to do it, what to do with uh, chasing bad debts. You would expect the manual, if, you, uh, if, if the franchise contemplates you taking on staff, to deal with employment law. You know, numbers of staff, how to uh, give warnings, uh, and so on. It will certainly ad address advertising and marketing, how to promote your franchise. It may indeed and usually does contain advertisements uh, and PR letters or things that you can send to the local press and so on. The manual normally contains details about the insurance that you are required to take out. And you need to obtain full details about that before you sign the franchise so that you can um, cost that element of, of, of the franchise. And lastly, it will deal with legal issues 
that are likely to affect your, your business. The franchisor ought to know what those legal issues are um, and give you some basic guidance in the manual. Now, this was not part of the journey, but we are going to discuss disputes. Disputes are by no means inevitable. Disputes in franchising are mercifully rare, um, but they do arise because just Imagine this, a franchisor has a hundred franchisees, all of whom have entered into five-year franchise agreements, and the franchise agreements are 40, 50, 60 pages long. Now, that is a sort of recipe for a potential legal dispute. So you can understand why disputes arise. They tend to arise from a franchisee's perspective because you don't think that the franchisor has done what the agreement said he would do, or the franchisor told you, uh, uh, gave you some information to encourage you to enter into the franchise that turns out not to be correct. So very often you see breach of contract and what lawyers call misrepresentation claims. Now, if I just say one thing, one thing to you about disputes, and that is don't get involved in them. Resolve them amicably. The only people who win from disputes are lawyers. Now. That's delightful if you want to make lawyers rich, but very few people, unfortunately for me, actually want to do that. So always try to find an amicable solution. Raise issues with the franchisor, communicate to the franchisor, and say why you're not happy, what uh, it is that you, you think the franchisor should do differently. Also, listen to the franchisor, and if the franchisor says you're not doing what you should be doing uh, because you think you know best, listen to the franchisor and actually uh, contemplate doing what the franchisor wants you to do. So always, always try to resolve disputes amicably. Don't rush into going to see a lawyer. Now, how are disputes in franchise agreements resolved? Well, there are three ways. And by far the best way, and you need to check the franchise agreement to make sure that this is in the franchise agreement, is mediation. Mediation is relatively cheap, relatively quick, it's confidential, uh, nobody forces, nobody decides who's right or wrong, but the role of the mediator is to put the parties together to find a commercial solution. That's a really good way to resolve franchise disputes. So check the franchise agreement to make sure that there is a mediation provision. A less good way is, is arbitration. The British Franchise Association has an arbitration scheme. Um, and again, you need to check the franchise agreement to see if, if, if that's in there uh, and obtain the franchisor's confirmation that he's happy to use the BFA's arbitration scheme. The least good way is litigation. Litigation is mind-blowingly expensive. You have no idea how expensive it is. And of course, Bear in mind that franchisors really don't want to lose litigation. They use expensive lawyers. Um, and if you lose the litigation, not only will you have to pay your own lawyer's fees, um, but you may also have to pay the franchisor's lawyer's fees. There are uh, conditional fee arrangements and, and after the event, uh, legal liability insurance that's available sometimes, but not always. Secondly, litigation, the result of litigation is uncertain. Lawyers always say to their clients, look, even if you have a, a, a case you absolutely can't lose, you will only win in 70% of, of, of occasions. Now, that means, if you put it, flip it, that three times out of 10, you've got a case you can't lose, you lose. So it's a really uncertain process. Um, and lastly, the stress is just extraordinary. So uh, the one message about disputes is do everything you can to make sure that you don't get to a situation where it gets litigious and you need to go and see a lawyer.